Likely it probably affects somebody you know. It probably affects a relative or a friend. And the gist of this case is this. The Ohio 8th District Court of Appeals ruled in our case after we had won at the trial court level, mind you. They ruled in our case that a plaintiff bank <coughs> can foreclose on your home with only the note or the mortgage. That is not relevant anywhere else in Ohio. There are 88 counties in this state. In 87 of those counties, that does not apply. And you have to ask yourself, why does it only apply in Cuyahoga County? Why have they allowed that to happen? Why have they put every homeowner in Cuyahoga County at risk by saying we can foreclose on you in a matter that's not allowable anywhere else in the state? Yes. Does everybody understand what a note and a mortgage is? Mm -hmm. Okay. For those that do not, the note is the monetary amount. The mortgage is the house or the collateral for the loan. Does that make sense to everybody? Everywhere else in the state of Ohio, in the other 87 counties in this state, you must have the note and the mortgage <coughs> to foreclose. That is also true everywhere else in the country. It is also true at the federal level. This ruling does a couple of things. It circumvents the Constitution. It negates, in this county, the 14th Amendment of the Constitution and the Equal Protection Clause. It violates the rule of federal preemption. Does everybody know what that is? <coughs> the rule of federal preemption is this. Federal law always, always, always trumps state, Trump state law. And the federal law is the case law that is 140 years old. Actually, it's older than that. Carpenter versus Longin. This is the federal rule. And that's the federal law that says you need both the note and the mortgage for foreclose. It's been in existence for since 1872. It's never been modified. It's never been overturned. Yet the Ohio 8th District Court of Appeals chose to take the Schwartzwald decision. And for those of you who don't know what that is, <coughs> that was a decision that was heavily anticipated for almost two years. And it came down in 2012. That decision said simply this, that federal home loans didn't own either the note or the mortgage in the Schwartzwald case and therefore had no standing. Now, to show you how that was contorted, the 8th District took that to mean, and nobody else has this ideology except the 8th District. They took that to mean that since federal home loan owned neither the note nor the mortgage, that if in fact they had owned either, they would have standing. That's a ridiculous rule, and they know it. And the Ohio Supreme Court knows it. And how do I know they know it? Because they refused jurisdiction in our case. They would not make a decision on whether the 8th District Court of Appeals ruling was correct, but it could not be. As I said before, no state ruling overrules federal principle. The federal principle in this is just what I said before. Carpenter versus Longin, the Equal Protection Clause, and the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution. All of these things are being neglected and basically negated by the Ohio 8th District Court of Appeals ruling in City Mortgage versus Patterson. Now, here's the problem. It affects everybody in our county, but it doesn't affect anybody else. And you have to ask yourself, why was this done? And how is it that neither the Ohio 8th District Court of Appeals nor the Ohio Supreme Court finds this to be discriminatory? How is it not? How is it valid here and not elsewhere? Now, 
Uh, I know you. I know everybody has some questions. But what I'm going to do is at this point, I'm going to hand.